Mr. Speaker, with your leave, I rise to make a presentation or my contribution on the present resolution before this National Assembly. I would like to take this opportunity as we discuss the resolution to firstly send out our best wishes to those in our society who have been impacted by this COVID-19 virus. In particular, our hearts are with those who have tested positive for the COVID-19, and we would wish them a speedy recovery such that they would be virus-free in a matter of days. And then, of course, you have our frontline workers who are at the forefront of dealing with this particular pandemic. They would be the ones who would have to interact with anyone who may have tested positive for the virus. They would be the ones to have to interact in the institutions that are more susceptible to have remnants of the virus. There are a plethora of persons who constitute uh, frontline workers. And we here, I believe, in the opposition, and, and I'm certain the entire National Assembly um, provide unwavering support to them. And that is why we hope that after this resolution is passed, we would be granted the opportunity to have a resolution of this National Assembly commending the work of the frontline and essential workers during the COVID-19 pandemic. This has been passed to the clerk of the National Assembly, and we are hoping that we will have full support of this August body in commending the work through a resolution of the frontline and essential workers. We know of them, the health officials, the nurses, the doctors, uh, the security forces, those in the emergency services, sanitation workers, those who keep everything running while we're here, people who keep the telecommunications going, public utilities, you have volunteers, you have media personnel, all of these persons, essential workers and frontline workers, keep us sustained at least when we are in a state of emergency. We want to commend as well the health professionals who I believe are trying their best in whatever circumstances to assist us, this federation, in protecting ourselves and the interests of the country from the impacts of COVID-19. As many have said, this is a worldwide pandemic. And we have not been spared. And there have been some decisions that have been taken as we try to fight this virus. Albeit, there will be discussions about the timing of certain decisions made. But our borders right now remain closed. From what I understand, the government is saying, according to them, that there is no community spread, although others may have a varying perspective. In fact, recently, I think the Prime Minister, in his address, spoke of the relaxation of 
some of the stringent measures that have been put in place to safeguard against the spread of the virus. So when our borders have remained closed, when the government has said that there is no community spread, when the Prime Minister has said that in coming days, they will be looking at how to introduce other non-essential services, then how does it follow that we enter a parliament today to extend the state of emergency to possibly up to 12 months? Those things don't follow. Our borders remain closed. So if the government is saying that we have contained the spread in-house and our borders are closed, if the government is looking to relax, if the government has said, as the Prime Minister said today, that he, he wants to or he, he, he's trying to be the first country to eradicate the virus, how does it follow that we have a resolution coming after a 21-day state of emergency to one that extends for up to 12 months? You see, one of the things that we have to be mindful of is that any decision that we take here in our parliament, it sends signals to our population. And a signal coming from the parliament that it is extending a state of emergency up to 12 months suggests, for instance, that those people who have been let off from work, who cannot go out to work, who are not making any money, will ask themselves, well, what does this mean? A state of emergency for up to 12 months? How does that impact my ability to apply my trade? Especially if I'm on the last end of a non-essential worker. And so we have to be mindful of what the economic impact can be by stating to the world, stating to investors that we can have an emergency, state of emergency for up to 12 months. That is not how it is done anywhere else in the world. And that is actually what the Constitution does not provide for, and I will go into that. The Constitution is very specific. And it is my view that this resolution may be at fault with the Constitution. And I want to expatiate on that. If we turn, as well, I'll, I'll read it from the resolution itself, and then I will go to the section of the Constitution that applies. In paragraph 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of the resolution, it states that, and whereas pursuant to section 19, I do not understand why the vagueness there, as opposed to the specific nature of the paragraph before that identifies 19.3, but whereas pursuant to section 19 of the St. Christopher and Nevis 1983 constitutional order, a declaration of emergency may be extended by resolution of the National pa Assembly up to a period of 12 months or such shorter period as may be specified therein. Let's go to what the Constitution says, actually, and this comes from section 19.7. So, Mr. Speaker, if you would turn with me to section 19.7. And 19, section 19 is the section of the Constitution 
that allows for the declaration of emergencies. And 197 reads, which I presume where the resolution is taking it from, as it was not specific as to where in 19. A resolution of the National Assembly or the Nevis Island Assembly passed for the purposes of this section shall remain in force for 12 months or such short a period as may be specified therein. It goes on. Provided that any such resolution may be extended from time to time by a further such resolution, each extension not exceeding 12 months from the date of the resolution effecting the extension. And any such resolution may be revoked at any time by a further resolution. So let's zero in on the first part of 197. It says a resolution of the National Assembly or the Nevis Island Assembly passed for the purposes of this section, which is granting a state of emergency and the things therein, shall remain, shall remain in force for, and I'm putting in my own words now because the Constitution used the term or, so it is either 12 months that the Constitution allows you to extend it for, or for a specified time therein. Therein. Which means that the resolution must tell us what the time of the resolution is. It is either 12 months, or it is either a shorter time as may be specified therein. It can't be both. Can't be both. That's not how it works. That is why every proclamation that the governor made, it had a start time and an end time. But this resolution only has a start time. And so I want to read it for the general public. Now, therefore, be it resolved, this is the resolution before us, be it resolved by the National Assembly that it is necessary to extend the state of emergency up to a period of 12 months or such shorter period as may be specified to take effect from, and I presume they will add the day. So, emergency up to a period of 12 months or such short a period as may be specified. Specified by whom? No one outside of this parliament, after this resolution has passed, can specify a time. The prime minister can't, after this is passed, say, okay, well, the, it will stop at this particular time. No. The parliament has to decide when it's going to start and when it's going to end. And so, so may make the argument, well, the parliament is about to dissolve automatically on May 14. And so we want to put something that is protective. So that is why you either have to do 12 months or you have to specify the time. But I want to refer the general public to how the Constitution deals with a situation that if we have an emergency, it gives the Parliament the power to reconvene in order to deal with that emergency. So therefore, I want to turn to Section 47.5 of our Constitution. Section 47.5. This section deals with the pro prorogation and dissolution of our parliament. And perhaps for um, clarity, I should read the sections leading up to section 5. So section 47 reads, The Governor General at any time 
the Governor General may at any time prorogue, prorogue or dissolve Parliament. Subject to subsection 3, Parliament, unless sooner dissolved, shall continue for five years from the date of the first sitting of the National Assembly after any dissolution and shall then stand dissolved. Meaning that in 2015, when we met, I believe, around May 14, for the first time, the Parliament automatically dissolves May 14 when it comes. No question about that. At any time when Her Majesty is at war, Parliament may extend the period of five years specified in subsection 2 for not more than 12 months at a time. And by the way, the Constitution defines war as St. Kitts and Nevis in hostility with another country. That is the definition of war in the Constitution. So it doesn't apply in this case. Provided that the life of the Parliament shall not be extended under this subsection for more than five years. Meaning if the country is at war, you can extend it for 12 months at a time, but not more than five years. But we're not at war. We don't have any hostility with any other country. So that's not an issue here. In the exercise of his powers to dissolve the Parliament, the Governor General shall act in accordance with the advice of the Prime Minister. We all know this. Provided that if the office of the Prime Minister is vacant and the Governor General acting in his own deliberate judgment considers that there is no prospect of his being able within a reasonable time to appoint to that office a person who commands the support of the majority of the representatives, the Governor General shall dissolve Parliament. What it's basically saying is that we cannot have a situation where we don't have a Prime Minister. So if there is nobody who can meet the requirements for a Prime Minister, we have to dissolve and have an election. That is to protect the operation of the executive. Section 5, which I was referring to, 47.5. If after a dissolution of parliament and before the holding of general, the general election of representatives, the prime minister advises the governor general that because of some matter of urgent national importance, it is necessary to recall Parliament. The Governor General shall summon the Parliament that has been dissolved to meet, but the general election of representatives shall proceed, and the Parliament that has been recalled shall, if not sooner dissolved, again stand dissolved on the date appointed for the nomination of candidates in that general election. So what does that mean? It means if we do like other countries, this thing is coming off of my face here. If we do like other countries and extend, let's say, a 21-day extension, a 30-day extension, because it is very dynamic. If the parliament dissolves before there is a need to completely done away with the state of emergency. The Constitution allows for us, for the Governor General, to recall this Parliament, to have another debate on a resolution to do with a matter of national importance, urgent matter, which, of course, this falls in. So there is absolutely no need under the sun for us to be coming to Parliament today to have a resolution to extend for 12 months or some shorter time. Because the resolution has to say, has to say it's either going to be 12 months or it's going to be a specified time. Because it cannot be open-ended. Because nobody outside of Parliament can then put a date on that. In fact, to get rid of the order of the resolution. We have to come back to Parliament to revoke it. So right now, this causes confusion. Because it needs a date when it expires. So it's either going to be 12 months, as the Constitution says. It's either going to be 12 months The what? In terms of the mask mm -hmm. on your face, if it's 
creating some discomfort. No, it's okay because we have to practice as much safety as possible. I just wanted to give you the yes. You know, so, and I, I am speaking, so you. when you speak, you can, um, what they said now, six, six feet or so, you can spread your thing. So, I don't want to be held responsible for anything. So, I don't mind. I have another one here, maybe I should change it to that. Let, 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 let's see how this one works. Oh, he said blue, matching my suit, man. Yes. All right. So let's see how this one works. Always prepared. So, Mr. Speaker, the resolution is flawed. Not that I have any problem with the fact that we are not yet out of the situation of the pandemic. Not that I am discrediting anything that the health professionals are saying, but there is absolutely no need under the, the sun for us on April 17, 2020 to extend a state of emergency by 12 months in the first case, but then to have a resolution that does not specify the end date of the, 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 the state of emergency. It has to be like that. It, it is very clear in the Constitution. And the thing about it is, and the problem I have, especially with the leader of this government, is as long as somebody from the opposition side says something, then it has no merit. That is his modus operandi. And so there will be no consideration by him at least that a second look ought to be taken. But I have a tad bit more confidence in the Attorney General. Just a tad bit. That he will show that first of all we cannot have a resolution that doesn't have an end date. Just open-ended. And the reason why is that nobody thereafter can change that. So effectively, since it doesn't have an end date, it therefore means that this is a resolution for 12 months. And the parliament has to reconvene in order to stop it and revoke it. So these are the very important points that I want us to take into consideration as we debate this particular resolution. The parliament, the parliament is the one who specifies the time. Just like the governor general under the powers of the same section 19 gave the governor the ability to have a state of emergency up to a specified number of times. And in every one of those uh, proclamations, there was a start time and an end time. And every new one that came started after the old one ended. In fact, if one ended at 6 a.m., the other one started at 6.01. Then that ended at 6 a.m. at another time. But this one, the one that has been brought to us this morning... And, you know, it's an emergency. So resolutions, you know. And then to hear that the member, the senator opposite says that a member has posted this online as if that this should not be in the public domain. Only because this is a, 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 a resolution. But ordinarily a bill would have even if it's even if it's not finished it is to be placed in the public domain so as soon as i get this as a representative in this house i have a duty but the member took the, the time to state that and yes 
I need to ensure that everybody knows what the government is trying to do, which I disagree with. I cannot support an open-ended resolution. It will cause confusion. People will start asking questions that are unnecessary as it relates to the constitutionality of elections, as it relates to the dissolution of parliament. We need to be specific. So I would humbly suggest that a time frame be specified so that we are minded to consider the support of something like that. It cannot be read like this as it is now. That now, therefore, be it hereby resolved by this National Assembly that it is necessary to extend the state of emergency up to a period of 12 months or such shorter period as may be specified. Yeah, the left out there in. Constitution says specified there in meaning. The Constitution requires that on the resolution, you must specify the time there in, in the resolution. So leaving it here as may be specified gives the impression that sometime after, somebody can specify a time. Like when you have a bill and it gives the minister the ability to make regulations thereafter, mm -hmm. this is not what this is. Once the resolution is passed, that is it. Government can't say, can't sit in cabinet and say that the resolution will end, state of emergency will end on April this or that. The resolution has to say it. And that is what people are concerned about. Why is it that it is so difficult, even in this time of national crisis, to just be upfront with what you intend to do? If you want it for 12 months, then just say 12 months. That is why today I was so disheartened when the leader of government business came to me and Marcelo and said that everyone, can we agree that everyone speaks for half an hour? I asked a few questions. We consulted. We said, okay. Only for them, for him to come after and say that everyone asking for emotion, that everyone speaks for half an hour, except the move of the resolution. It is the same modus operandi that people are fed up with. Just be upfront. This is a time of national crisis. Come on. What's that about? And we want clarity. When you have national crisis in a country and the government is not clear on what it is doing, it has the potential, greater than other times, to cause confusion. And people are already asking, well, what does this mean? It means lockdown for 12 um, months? It means I can can't work? It means that I can't get bread for my family? What about, what about the tourism industry? You're sending a signal to the world that even if you open up I have passed in my, in my parliament a resolution for 12 months. People want to know. They want to have some confidence that when you say something, they can understand it. And this resolution creates confusion and unnecessary confusion at that. It also doesn't follow as I started by saying, as I end, that the government itself is saying that the borders remain closed, that the, there is no community spread according to them, although people who have not traveled contracted the virus here in St. Kitts and Nevis. They're saying that they're speaking of relaxation, introducing non-essential services to the people. And that constitutes bringing a resolution for 12 months, the maximum time given to you?
What kind of signal is that? We have to be so careful with our words when it comes to the economic outlook. People who might be willing to invest to help jumpstart the economy may think twice that the government knows something that they don't know. Why they are able to have a 12 month state of emergency open ended resolution. All it has is a start date. You ever hear more? Something got a start date while it said some shorter time, but no end date. Let me read it again so you are clear. Now, therefore, be it hereby resolved by this National Assembly that it is necessary to extend the state of emergency up to a period of 12 months or such short a period as may be specified, it didn't say by who, to take effect from dash day of April 2020 to combat the threat of the COVID-19 virus to the Federation of St. Christopher and Nevis. So we're going to start on some day in April, which I so presume is tomorrow, and we don't know when it's going to end. We don't know. When are you going to end? And that is why you have to take incremental steps. That is why you have to take incremental steps and say, we will do three weeks. We'll do 21 days. After that, we will do another 14 days. Or we're going to do 30 days. But 365 days? So nobody, no, nobody plan for any type of um, small uh, a social distancing culture armor. I am not. Because it needs to be specific. specific. Must be specific. I want to support the health of professionals in the best advice that they can possibly give to keep our country safe and our people safe. With that must come clear and decisive decisions of a government. And many have said that this government has fallen way short of that. Started out with bundled things. A speech on a dead and coming to correct it. A decision today and two days later correct it. So they are saying that they want specific and a confident government to conduct their affairs. And the government must make clear that this resolution is not intended to subvert the democratic processes that are constitutionally due under our constitution of St. Kitts and Nevis. With these few words, Mr. Speaker, may it please you. <laughs>